Hello children and welcome to a new chapter Ancient India and its contribution towards culture and science. Now when we look at literature as such India has contributed a lot to the literature of the world. So when we see ancient Indian literature the contributions come from the Vedas they come from the Upanishads they come from the Puranas they come from the epics as well as from secular literature which existed towards the end of ancient india so we'll take one by one and explain them so first we have the vedas when we look at the vedas it is the first and the most important contribution to ancient indian literature and we have four vedas so what are the four vedas that we have we have rigveda we have samaveda yajurveda as well as atharva veda and these vedas tell us about the religious beliefs of people and the social environment in which the aryans lived in so we will take each veda and see what they are made up of if we look at rig veda first when we see in rig veda it is the first veda that is there and it is the heart of the entire vedic knowledge and it contains about 10552 verses then we have the yajur veda the yajur veda is basically composed of hymns which are for sacrifices and offerings and these contain about 2000 verses the third veda that we have is sama veda so when you see sama veda this has hymns for singing and again here it contains about 2000 verses Lastly we have the Atharva Veda the Atharva Veda has verses for rituals as well as rites and it contains about 6000 verses and this Atharva Veda also includes the Upanishads now let us move on to what is Upanishad when you look at Upanishad Upanishads contain deep knowledge about the universe humanity the ultimate truth and these are one of the treasured and the most richest literature the world has seen and these upanishads contains a teaching by some of the most celebrated teachers and famous teachers to their selected disciples and even these upanishads if you see they are in the form of dialogues dialogues between teacher and a student like direct communication and most indian philosophies today are based on this high level of thought process taught by the upanishads now when you see the upanishads there is believed to be more than 100 upanishads but we have 10 principal upanishads which exist and they are isha then we have prashna then brihadaranyaka then we have taittiriya then we have kena mandukya chandogya kato mandaka as well as aitareya so these are the 10 principal upanishads which are there if we move on and to look at the next source of literature of india it is the puranas what are puranas these tell us about the family tree of gods and rishis as well as the family tree of royal families and they give us information in the form of ancient tales about the origin of the universe and detailed descriptions of the earth there are about 18 puranas that exist today then we have the epics which is another very rich literary source of ancient india we all know that there are two epics which is the ramayana as well as the mahabharata and these are really great contributions to ancient indian literature and apart from these two epics we also have the buddhist and the jain texts which are quite important religious literature then we have the jataka tales as well as we have the panchatantra which tell us about the people and the society and they also give us lessons about nature of man and how he tends to react to different situations and circumstances and these stories all have moral values and these moral values did not just hold good for ancient times they are relevant even today then we have towards the end of ancient india the coming of the secular literature when you see the secular literature as such these are creative literary works by famous poets like kalidasa shudraka 
Bhana Bhatta as well as Bhasa. So these were some of the four literary poets who wrote secular literature. And if you see Artha Shastra as well as Dharma Sutras given by Kautilya or Chanakya, these are ideas on rules and regulations. They speak about economy and social regulations of ancient India. Then you have the Sangam literature which are generally Tamil texts and they give us information about the society and the culture of the Tamil region of India. Then lastly we have foreign accounts by travellers and scholars who came to India during ancient times such as Fahin, Huin Sang, then we have Megasthus who is the Greek ambassador and through his work called Indica, we get a unique insight into Indian culture and society from the point of view of foreigners. So these are another contribution to the literary works of India. Now we'll move on to the art and architecture. In the field of art and architecture, India has won great laurels. For example, we have the highly polished pillars of the Mauryan period, which have mounted statues of animals such as this one. Then we have the Gandhara and Mathura school of art where you have beautiful sculptures which are so intricately designed. Then we have the Ajanta paintings, the songs of whom we will never forget because of their brilliant colors and their vibrant shades which do not fade even after 14 centuries. Then we have the temples built by Pallavas and Chalukyas which are great architectural monuments. Then we have the stupas and the viharas which are associated with Buddhism and there is even a said that there is a small box that is placed in the center of the stupa which generally contains precious stones as well as coins and bodily remains either of Buddha or his disciples and they say that a path is laid around the stupa which is called as the pradakshina which is surrounded by railings which adds to the look of the stupa. Then we have the great Ashokan pillar which has the lion capital and this lion capital has been adopted into the national emblem of India which is a very proud thing to say and this Ashokan pillar we see at Sarnath. Then the tales of art and architecture do not end there. We even have the cave temples of the Ajanta and if you see this is the cave temple of the Ajanta and it's theme was based on stories and tales associated with Buddha, his life and his preachings and these are very lifelike and brilliant. Then we have the Kailashnath temple of the Ellora. This is carved out of a single rock and it's an outstanding work of art of ancient India. Then we have the temples at Mahabalipuram which is the Ratha temple and it is done by cutting and carving granite boulders and we also have magnificent temples at Kanchivuram which are built out of stone as well as brick. Now if you see most Hindu temples made in ancient India have a central sanctum which is called as the Garbha Griha where the deities of Shiva, Vishnu or Durga are placed and worshipped by the priests as well as the devotees who come to render their offerings. And generally this Garbhagraha has a tower on top of it which is called as the Shikhara. So most of the temple architecture if you see they have a Garbhagraha as well as a Shikhara even today. Now we'll move on to the contributions of India in science, mathematics and medicine. Astronomy, mathematics and medicine made great progress in ancient India. Now we will just split them into pieces. If we look at the achievements in the field of mathematics, we were the ones who introduced the numeration system. Then we were best at the decimal system. Even the use of zero was started in India thanks to Aryabhata. And the Arab traders learnt these three mathematical systems and helped in spreading them throughout the world. Then if we focus on the achievements in the field of astronomy, we have Aryabhata who discovered the cause for solar as well as lunar eclipse. He also measured the circumference of the earth with the help of mathematical formulas which is correct even today. And he said that the sun is the stationary object and the earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. And he also wrote a book on mathematics and astronomy called as Aryabhatiyam. 
then in the field of medicine if you see ancient india has made great progress we had indian physicians who could diagnose diseases and prescribe medicines for their cure so if we see there were two famous indian physicians called shushruta as well as charaka if you see shushruta shushruta wrote a book on surgery and charaka wrote the charaka samhita which describes various diseases like leprosy and tuberculosis and it also consists of lists of plants and herbs which can be used as medicines against these diseases so it is thanks to people like this who brought india into the forefront into the limelight and it's because of people like this that india is progressing today even in the field of craft and technology india did not stay back we have great achievements even in this field for example if you see indians ancient indians they were great and talented craftsmen and indian dyers invented lasting colors for this we know the example of ajanta paintings which are so brilliantly colored and they do not fade and it is said that it was indians who discovered the blue color and we became very famous for the blue colored dye not just that they say that indians were also experts of making steel and indian steel was ex- exported to many parts of the world and they say that no other country in the world could manufacture steel swords like indian craftsmen so this is something that we should feel very proud about so this wraps up this chapter let's do a quick recap of what we studied so we looked at ancient indian literature we saw that it is made up of the vedas and vedas are of four types that is rigveda samaveda yajurveda and atharva veda then we have upanishads then we have contributions from the puranas we have the two great epics the ramayana and mahabharata apart from that we of course have the buddhist and jain text then we have the secular literature which contributed to the literary richness of india then we spoke about the art and architecture and all the marvels of indian architecture and art like the ajanta painting the ellora caves the ajanta caves we spoke about the ashokan pillar and so on then we spoke about the contributions of ancient india and in the field of science mathematics as well as medicine we spoke about aryabhata and his contributions to science and mathematics we spoke about shushruta as well as charaka and their contribution to medicine finally we spoke about craft and technology where we spoke about the introduction of the blue dye by indian dyers as well as the craftsmen who were so talented to make the finest steel swords so with this we wrap this chapter if you have any doubts at all please get back to us please like and subscribe thank you